Now, leaves, what are the what are the forms of the leaves? It can be scaly, it can be the foliage type of leaves. That means scaly means they can be brown, thick, tough, and needle-like. Thick, brown, tough, needle-like. See here. I'm just pointing it out. Okay? Try to try to look. See brown, thick, they're tough, and the leaves are scaly. They are needle-like. On the other hand, if you talk about the foliage leaves, these are green, soft, and they are can also be the needle-like. The shape I'm talking about, needle-like. Now talking about the foliage leaves, it can be simple, it can be compound. Okay, you see the example ginkgo. Okay, ginkgo. These are the simple leaves. Simple leaves mean that they, they are undivided leaves. Well, you'll understand slowly because I'll show you that leaves can also be divided into smaller leaflets. Coming to it, wait for it. Simple leaves are undivided leaves. Understand this right now? Ginkgo. Is an example. Can you see? You you know about the leaf structures, correct? Well, cedrus. See here, or the cedar trees. Okay, they have needle-like leaves, and each needle, they are each, they are one simple leaf. These are simple leaves. They don't have leaflets. Great, great. Well, you know, if I talk about ginkgo, they're quite special. They have always been associated with several health. Uh, health applications fine for example they have uh, people claim that they have a lot of applications in case of brain functioning blood circulation and many other health effects okay it's very helpful for human beings great ginkgo also one more important fact I'll write it down here ginkgo biloba Biloba, okay, ginkgo biloba. So this is the scientific name of a species, okay, a plant, gymnosperm. And this is known as the living fossil. Can anyone tell me what do I mean by when I tell that this is known as living fossil? What do you infer from, from this word, living fossil? Try to answer. Try to answer. You have to be logical. Living fossil. Then I'm going to give you some data. Interesting data. Come on. I want you to give some answer. Try to guess it at least. Why is this species ginkgo biloba called the living fossils? You know these are also known as the maiden hair tree. Maiden hair tree. Now the answer to this point. Living fossil is because this is the only surviving member only surviving member of a division in plant kingdom which is ginkgo phyta which is estimated to date back it, it's, it dates back to about 270 million years ago 270 million years ago and ginkgo biloba is the only species which is there now from this division ginkgo phyta fine okay great so you understand why it is known as living fossil. So yes, questions can be asked over here. This is very, very important in case of need. Let's move on and try to figure out what do I mean by the compound leaves. Compound leaves can be of two types, pinnately compound and palmately compound. Take a note on the picture. Fine, one by one. You know about the simple leaf? You see, it's undivided. Now. Pinnately compound means that these leaves, pinnately compound, okay, see the image properly, slowly. Here, what happens? Leaflets are formed. So, compound leaves are those in which the leaf is divided into small leaflets. Leaflets, in case of pinnately compound leaves, arise from both ends of the, both sides of the axis, mean uh, it, it, it's the ratches also. It's no. It's known as ratches. Okay, find the stalk of the ratches. So it is something like one leaf from one leaf let from here, one from here. So as you can see in the pinnately compound. But palmately compound is a bit different. What happens here? All the leaflets they are attached to one point. It's like as you can see in my hand. All the fingers they are attached to this palm. So 
palmetly compound and yes the name came because of this fact fine okay so two types spinetly compound where the leaflets are formed on the ratches right and palmetly is there is one point where all the leaflets are attached understood the difference let me show you let me show you pinus and situs now a question let me see if you can answer how will you understand by looking at a leaf or looking at these structures leaf like structures if it's a leaf or a leaflet how will you understand can any one of you answer this let me see it's easy it's easy just one observation and after you understand about this in this particular class you can play tricks with your friends just ask them do you think it's a leaf show them and ask them do you think it's a leaf or it's a leaflet now first answer me before that you have to be clear answer me how will you figure out the difference between a leaf and the leaflets because they almost look like similar you may misunderstand that okay these are small leaves and not leaf leaflets how will you understand one hint is you have to look at the base where the leaf is attached to the stem or the branch now can you tell me this is the hint you have to look at the base of the base where the leaf attaches to the stem or the branch i'm giving you the answer right now if you find that the leaves at the base they have a lateral bud that means it's a leaf if there is no lateral bud then those are leaflets fine if there is a presence of leaf if there is a presence of lateral bud they are the leaves if there is absence of lateral bud they are the leaflets clear great you have learned something new now so the gymnosperms do not have palmately compound leaves they have pinnately compound leaves now yes the leaves it can be scaly and foliage adaptations you know these i told you gymnosperms they are found in the extreme uh, temperature conditions humid wind and also the cold weather tropical regions savannas deserts and why and how they survive because of these special leaf structures fine i'll give you the i'll give you the exact reasons see here see how the leaves help adaptations of the leaves needle like leaves where will you find on snow so that the snow sits cannot sit on the leaves why what's the problem over there if snow gets deposited on the, if the leaf structure is like this think about it think about it if the leaf structure is like this when there is where there is lots of snowfall in the cold areas then the snow will be deposited on the leaf the leaves would not get proper sunlight fine it would also block the important pores that are present in the leaf you know about the pores right yeah yes so the stomata can be blocked accessibility to proper light will be blocked so the snow should not settle on the leaves so the leaf structures are needle like what happens the snow glides off it cannot settle so it reduces the surface area so less of less water loss because these are the areas where liquid water is not available in enormous amounts it's all frozen so in order to in order to reduce the amount of water loss which will happen because of if there is enormous amount of surface area that means enormous amount of stomata will be present stomata present means that means the the water loss will happen transpiration will happen you're going to study in detail about these things in the chapter photosynthesis in plants wait for it understood thick cuticle cuticle is basically a waxy coating on the leaves it prevents the water loss fine can you relate it shrunken stomata stomata yes the pores which through which transpiration happens water loss happens so the shrunk stomata is shrunken it reduces it's reduced the pore is reduced so that it can reduce water loss and evergreen evergreen that means they do not shed off the leaves so throughout the year the leaves are green it stays over there so that throughout the year they can capture sunlight and the photosynthesis process can continue fine 